I'm Utahime and this is Anime Expo 2022 and I'm with The Geek Life and we have a special, special guest. Um, I'm so excited to speak with you. Can you please introduce yourself and your brand? Hi everybody, my name is Lamar Harris but I go by Lamar the Con Guy. I do so many things, I run comedy panels at conventions, I play t tabletop RPGs, I stream video games and stuff like that. I I have an afro. That's pretty much what I'm really known for. Uh, I remember I cut my afro one time and then people forgot who I was. People were really upset. They it were ready to bad. riot. It was real bad. But yeah, that's who I am. I'm just a guy. I'm just a con guy. That's why I'm Lamar the con guy. He's leaving out that he's an amazingly talented guy. But we're going to get right into that. I want to know your origin story, like how this all began, how the brand Lamar the Con Guy truly started. Um, actually, believe it or not, it started in 2016 right at uh, AX, Anime Expo. Um, I got a free ticket from a friend and then I accidentally entered the late comedy showdown in 2016 and I won it, never doing stand-up uh, before in my life. And ever since then, uh, they've invited me to come back, and I started making a lot of friends because of LCS. And um, over time, I just got inv I'm invited to other cons. And six years later, I'm doing like 15 cons in one year. I'm gonna die. This is exhausting. Wait, but the, what we really want to know: How many panels do you normally do at a con? I know that they're curious. My record for a single convention is 18. I've 18. done 18 panels at a single convention. No, no big deal. No, no big deal there. No, no but worries. you know what? That leads me to the next question I have for you. As someone who's doing like 18 panels and doing comedy and TTRPGs, all of these different things, juggling a lot of hats, how do you prevent burnout? Because I'm sure that as a content creator, it's, you know, you, you sometimes can, you know, lose a little fuel and, you know, for your mental health, like how, how do you kind of handle that? Um, the true answer is I don't. Uh, <laughs> but the good answer is I am very lucky or blessed to have good friends in my corner who are always there to support me and help me when I'm doing too much. And that alone is something that I, I'm very happy I have because without any of my friends, because I've made so many friends because of conventions, without them, I would have burnt out a long time ago, but they always give me like, hey, Lamar, you're doing great, you're doing fine. You're not, they keep telling me I'm not bad at this. So with my friends, I can do anything, but also Red Bull. <laughs> It gives you wings. It gives you <laughs> Not wings. sponsored. Hashtag not a sponsor. <laughs> um, going kind of off of that a little bit, as far as just your journey, sometimes, you know, um, you'll experience difficulties or obstacles along the way. Um, can you share maybe uh, one or like uh, certain instances where you kind of ran into a, a little bit of a pit stop or, you know, kind of what we call L? or yeah. like a loss um, and how you dealt with that because I think that a lot of people would like to know who might be going through a similar situation. Yeah, so especially when you're in a creative space, a lot of it is trial and error. Like you have an idea, you try to work on it and then you execute and sometimes it just doesn't work. I've done so many panels, some of them just did not work and I felt like terrible. It's like I'm clearly a fraud, I shouldn't be doing any of this, but like you just got to learn to either pivot or push through it. Not every audience is the same. Not every creative journey is the same. So if you are just opening up your eyes, think about something objectively, what didn't work, what did work, and use that to tweak, then you can keep going. Because if you have anything, if you have a spark of anything, you can kindle that by adding more fire, more wind. You just got to make, make the fire work. No, I, I think that you make excellent points, and I, I'm sure that a lot of people will find that really, really helpful. So we talked about some, some L's, mm -hmm. but we want to talk about the positive side of things, all of the wins. Like, I want to know um, what is probably your, your proudest moment so far in your creator uh, journey? My proudest moment in my creator journey 
it was probably like 2018 where strangers started recognizing who the hell I was. I saw that earlier, like literally people, there was like five different people were like, Lamar, you I know. Guess, I guess so. <laughs> I, I, people were like, that's Lamar. Like I've had a few people talk to me about being the comedy guy and just enjoying the stuff I do. But like when people enjoy what I do and they come to see, they had, they had a great time. That's all I really wanted. I do a, I do a panel called Make Weaves Laugh, which is just a try not to laugh challenge. It's supposed to be 18 plus. We accidentally forgot to tell them that. So we had like these bright eyed, bushy tailed kids there and their parents, but we pivoted and we did it. And like one of the parents came up and was like, hey, my child's very nervous. They're very shy. You called them up, you made them laugh and really appreciated that. So I was like, that's amazing. That's making people happy is what it's really about. So that's my win. Whenever I get a smile, that's a win. And you do that so well. Like, I don't think I've ever seen anyone approach you without the biggest smile or like already laughing before you even say anything because they, they just, they love your energy and it is infectious. Um, I want to know, because I mean, we're surrounded by so many different fandoms uh, right now. I want to know what fandoms or like um, nerdy things really um, inspire you um, or like have had an impact on your life. Uh. I think it's going to be the same for a lot of people in that I just enjoyed being able to separate the current reality I'm living in to kind of put myself or watch a journey for uh, a character that's like doing stuff. Like it started by watching anime and it's like, this is amazing, crazy thing that these people are doing. And then I got into TTRPGs where I was able to create characters outside of my basic look and feel and that I could finally play these things because I, I like acting and stuff like that. So creating characters that I have full autonomy over uh, beyond a dice some, that sometimes screws me over. But um, that's... Sometimes the dice tells the story, right? Sometimes the dice decides <laughs> that today's a good day to die. And so... Fail all your death saves. No big deal. Oh, crit one in a death save is the <laughs> worst. It's the worst thing. It's full hemorrhage. But yeah. That, that's that's what it is. I just have a great time. Now, okay, we're touching on a little bit of uh, the tabletop mm -hmm. genre. Uh, you've been getting really, really involved, and uh, you also to DM some shows, uh, some live shows as well. So how has that experience been from just, like, becoming a player to now, uh, you know, getting on the other side, the DM side of things? Um, going from a player to a DM is a freaking leap of faith. Uh, not only in yourself, but, like, your players to, like, it's it's a spotlight it's really it's a really big spotlight to become a dm but once you get into it like do it once you'll get hooked and you'll keep doing it over and over again and also you're not matt mercer or brandon lee mulligan or bria Iyengar. it's okay they have 15 people helping them if you make a mistake it's fine you're a human like it's great but just tell the story that's really what we're really about but you will become a forever DM. Once you make that jump, you'll never play again. That's a joke, but. Okay, so, so you think that if I actually decided to not be chicken and to try it, that I would be hooked? Yes, instantly. <laughs> you, when you have the power of someone's life in your hands, yes, you will instantly be hooked. Copy that. I, like, <laughs> I, now I'm like, I have your life in my hands. Now I'm intrigued. Um, I want to try to go back a little bit uh, because we were talking about like you kind of touched on different advice as far as like DM advice and things like that but what advice would you give your younger self like in general like life advice what advice would I give my younger time, self yeah if you go back in time what would be the best uh, advice you could give yourself oh Jesus we're going way too deep okay and it could be something lighthearted yeah, like something I'm gonna go lighthearted. <laughs> The best advice I would have given myself back in the day, trust yourself, just do that. Because I, I, I just didn't trust myself that anything I was going to do was going to work. But when you just get out there, that's what it really is. And I think that's going to be what people have to battle. It's a lot of, uh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> it's a lot of stuff like that. No, I, I, I think that that's excellent advice. Trusting yourself and believing in yourself. That's always important. So we got through those questions. That was easy, right? Yeah. That was... 
Now we're getting to the hard hitting questions. Oh God. The ones that everyone wants an answer to. Oh God. We call it our lightning round, ladies and gentlemen and babies. We're gonna do this, non-binary friends. You ready? Can, no. can you handle it? No. I, th I think you can. I, I, I know this, I have faith. I, I, you, I'm, I'm proud of you for having faith in me. <laughs> All right, here we go. Sub or dub? Sub. Oh my God. Anime or manga? Anime. Do you think that Goku was a good father? No, hell no. <laughs> All day, no. Goku is trash. Piccolo for life. Heck no. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got that answer for sure. Uh, anime that you feel is overrated. Anime that I feel is overrated. All of the harem anime. They're the exact same. All of them. All of them? All the really? All of them? Every Love Hina to Tenchi Muyo. They're all the exact same. And Gundams. Both of them. <laughs> Overrated. <laughs> they are cartoon. They are Toys R Us for weebs. They are just there to sell you another Transformer. It is overrated. <laughs> all right. We're going to finish it off with this one. Best anime intro. Like intro song. Best anime intro song. Like you don't have to give no the exact title, just like what anime, like which one stands out. It's uh, I'm over thirty, so it's gonna be Dragon Dragon Unlocked to Dragon Dragon Ball Z. Yes. And just like four minutes of guitar solo. <laughs> that's that's it. That's what everyone else is just trying to get there. That's it. Or or One Punch Man. Oh yeah. Yeah. That scream, it, it can't do it. Have you heard someone can't do it? <laughs> don't, don't, don't. No, I can't do it. I, I, I mean, I've heard you sing in octaves because you are, you are, you do karaoke and you do host karaoke panels. I do. So, I mean. I mean, but I still, no. <laughs> I'm too old, my throat, <laughs> it burns. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Can you let everyone know uh, where they can find you and show you lots of love? Yes, you can find me on all social media under Lamar the Con Guy, L-E-M-A-R the Con Guy, Instagram, Twitch, and Twitter, also my link tree, linktr.ee slash Lamar the Con Guy. You'll find me everywhere. TikTok, Lamar the Con Guy. Thank you so much. And thank you guys for tuning in. We got more special guests at Anime Expo 2022 coming up. So stay tuned, guys.